In an earlier video, we came up with this new way of expressing null spaces of matrices. For example, this matrix N represents the null space of this matrix A. So what we decided to do was to combine the elements of a basis of the null space into a matrix. And the advantage of this new notation was that the relationship between the matrices A and N can be captured with a very compact and elegant algebraic identity, A n equals zero, and that's a great advantage. But from a certain point of view, this is not 100% satisfactory. After all, the null space is a space. It's a collection of vectors, and this is a matrix. So we're not all of a sudden saying that null spaces are now matrices. What we are saying is that this matrix represents the null space. More specifically, the null space is the column space of this matrix. It's the collection of all possible linear combinations of the columns of this matrix. In other words, of the elements of a basis for the null space. So it sounds just right. However, it's not quite as direct as our old way of capturing null spaces. Now this expression looks like a linear space. By plugging in all possible values for alpha and beta, we would get out of this expression all possible elements of the null space n. So from this point of view, this expression is superior. But from the point of view of matrix algebra, this expression is superior. But perhaps there is a way to reconcile these expressions. And that's the topic of this video. We're looking for a matrix algebraic way of reconciling these expressions. More specifically, can you think of a way of combining the letters alpha and beta into a matrix and then multiplying this matrix by this one in a way that would recover this expression? Now, the only way to come up with matrix identities like this is by trial and error. And in this case, you really have just two decisions to make. Number one, whether to combine alpha and beta into a row or a column. And number two, whether to multiply from the left or from the right by that matrix. Now, after trial and error, you'll realize that there is only one combination that will work. And that is to combine alpha and beta into a column and to put it on the right of the matrix N. That's the only way to come up with a compatible matrix product. And it looks like this. To convince yourself that this is right, simply carry out this product from the column-wise perspective. And the result will be a single column that equals alpha of the first column plus beta of the second column. So this very expression is recovered. And we did it with the help of matrix algebra. So once again, matrix algebra shows its amazing versatility. It's not unlimited, but it is quite impressive.